Hello everyone, this is Count Riolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And as you can see here, today I'm going to be talking about the Lobby Store. Now, the reason why I am is because I got caught, caught off guard, probably as well as a lot of people, in that um, in this past week, um, there, were, there was a huge sale with the Lobby Store, combined with an upgrade weekend, combined with, with Phoenix Lockboxes being available. I've never seen all three of those at the same time. It almost feels like that script makes me a little bit apologetic with some of the extreme issues that have been going on. Like, for instance, the reason why I don't have tier 6 reputation for a lot of my captains is because I've been having a lot of technical issues getting in, getting into the game. So, um, some of those videos are going to be delayed a little bit. We will see how long that will have to be delayed. But anyway, in this video, I'll be covering some general considerations when it comes to lobby inside the game. And then I will go into some space gear and ground gear. And you'll see in the general considerations as to why I'm covering those two things. And why I will not be covering starships, shuttles, bridge officers, and other cosmetic items inside the game. Like normal, see the description for the various time links in this video. So when it comes to considerations when you're using lobby, um, it is the costliest currency of all the various currencies inside the game. Um, you can only get lobby through opening lock boxes. It is the only way to do so. Um, at least at least in my testing throughout my time playing Star Trek Online, on average, I get about five lobby per lock box that I open. So it's a lot of lobby. It's a lot of lock boxes they're opening. Not to mention that, you know, master keys vary anywhere between at least at least on PC, anywhere between three million eight hundred thousand and like four million three hundred thousand. Um, energy credits. It's, it's kind of like the general range that I see a lot of the prices for Master Keys on average throughout the year. So it's a lot of energy credits to get Master Keys to open stuff, or if you're going to just use Zen directly to buy them, it's, it's a lot of Zen to buy lots of Master Keys to open lockboxes. Um, whenever you open lockboxes, though, the lobby is bound to account. Um, however, um, some stuff, whenever you get them, is bound to your character. Um, most of the stuff in the lobby store can actually be sold on, on the exchange. So these various categories of ships and crew, um, costumes, bounty pets, and devices can all be sold on the exchange. And if you get something from there, um, it's not immediately bound to your character. Like you have to use it in order for it to be bound to your character. However, if you get something from the space gear or the ground gear sections of the lobby store, it is immediately bound, not only on the pickup, but bound to your character. So it, it, it really like, it really sucks. Like if you accidentally like bought something and but you're wanting to buy it for another character, you have to be super careful. Um, in terms of in terms of what you're buying, make sure that you're buying it on your correct character, especially if you're going for a space gear or ground gear for the for, for lobby, because these categories can be found. All those stuff can be found on the exchange. But space and ground gear cannot. My advice personally is if you're going to get lobby, I highly recommend getting stuff from space and ground gear first. And then if you want something from one of those other, other categories and the prices are really absurd on the exchange, then you can use your lobby for those other categories too. But that's just me personally. Space gear, everything in space gear costs 200 lobby. Um, and ground gear, your armors in there cost 200 and everything else costs 50. So it's, it, it's overall quite a bit cheaper in ground gear. Um, so yeah, with all that said, um, we'll go into our first major section, which is space gear. It costs 200 lobby for anything in there. And there's two types of things in here. There's there's weapons that go in, in your weapon slots. And then there's, there's consoles, which are all universal consoles. So they can go any, anywhere. There are 10 different sets of space gear. And I'll be going through all those sets from the oldest ones to the newest ones inside the game. Um, this first set is the Ferengi Marauder Space Set. Um, definitely in the early stages of Star Trek Online, this was, this, I, I, I can definitely see this as being pretty powerful. Um, especially uh, for like trading and things. Um, a little bit of bonus to Combination XP is, it could be pretty nice too. Unfortunately, um, for a lot of these, I mean, Mines is already a niche thing in the first place. And power transfer rate, there's a lot of easy ways to get power transfer rate nowadays. So this is not very viable either. 
And this third one, the rapid fire missile launcher, it is technically the fastest firing missile in the game, but this isn't the only place that you can, can get a missile. If you go to the Mirrors and Smoke mission, um, you, you can get a free Kentari mass produced missile launcher there that that um, launches only a half second slower than um, the Ferengi missile launcher. And this one's free instead of 200 lobby. Unless you really want two missile launchers, the Ferengi one isn't really that valuable. And so in my opinion, this whole entire set is not worthwhile to worry about for things inside the game. The next set is the Temporal Warfare set. Um, I personally don't like destructible projectiles, so this is kind of out of there already. Plus, this doesn't have any stats on it, which is really unfortunate for a lot of for a, a universal console. Um, Crown Time Dual Beam Bank is pretty limiting. Um, it is a good weapon, but it's very limiting in terms of what you're able to use, and the overall sets are not very powerful. However, the Tachyo Kinetic Converter over here is a pretty powerful console. It gives you a good amount of crit chance and crit severity. Um, keep in mind, every, everything in the lobby store starts at rare, instead of like very rare or ultra rare, like most of the other stuff in the game, towards the, for, for most of the end, end game stuff. Just because that was kind of when lobby first came out, that it was very rare for most things, and so this was just rare. Um, so yeah, um, it does give you like a good, good, good chance of crit severity, which is pretty powerful. Um, so yeah, the third set is Silent, Silent Enemy. Um, this is all built around having this on an Alachi ship. Um, not a big fan of these torpedoes, plus th these are Alachi disruptors. And um, this um, armor or this um, weapon proc was nerfed into the ground. Um, so this is this is not as good as the stats would have you have you think that it, it, it would it would be, it would be. Um, so these guys are not very good. This thing is still extremely powerful though. This gives you the highest crit severity of any um, any console at all inside the game. Plus, it gives you some other stuff for survival too. So it is pretty powerful. Um, I mean, the 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 set stuff here. Maybe if if you want to try to swing it, possibly having the Crescent Wave Cannon on there for its missile disruptor damage. But there's so many other other great sets now, especially with Tier Six reputation for disruptor damage that. You're already going to get everything that you want with one of the other sets a whole lot easier and a whole lot more cheaply. So that's just my personal preference there. Um, Apex Predators is the next one. This is all built around the long range destabilized Tetron heavy cannon. This guy can fire from 12 kilometers away, away and, and that's unique because most weapons in the game can only fire from 10 kilometers. It can fire from 12. And it doesn't have any diminished um, damage with, with with that range that all other energy weapons have that problem. So that is pretty powerful. However, you don't have any other weapons that can fire from 12 kilometers away, and this isn't a particularly powerful weapon. So that's what I that's what I have, have, have up against this. Now, if you you could get this weapon and then you know craft a whole bunch of other weapons that have 12 kilometer range then I could see this set being extremely valuable. Because you don't have that, it's not quite as valuable for me personally. You have a mine here again, which I'm not really a fan of. This thing, the only thing good for this is that you, it gives you an additional percent defense, which, which, which can add up to a, a quite a bit amount of defense, depending on how much defense you have on, on your ship stacked up. The set power things in here aren't quite that good either. In order to, and in order to fully get this thing really good, you have to use a, a Herogen ship, which there aren't any tier six Herogen ships to my understanding in the game right now. So that's also pretty limiting to your capabilities and in, in being able to use this set effectively. So my opinion, don't even worry about this one either. The next one is the contractual agreement set. Um, this one's pretty hard um, because the set makes you feel like they used to be using plaza projectile weapons, but you have this universal console that makes you feel like you should be using a lot of energy weapons with this weapon power cost reduction and, and all energy damage resistance. This guy by himself is, is pretty powerful. I don't feel like this really synergizes well with the rest of these things here. So that's just me personally. Um, you definitely can make, make these work. Um, 
this is this is corrosive plaza which is the plaza with the highest dps generally so it's so it is good plasma but you really have to work that into into your build in order for it to really be effective council defense defense pact it's another plasma set with an uh, with another with a lot of other big issues the set stuff does give you more plasma damage and gives you some potential armor pen if you have all three parts and you have your hull above 90 percent The most I could possibly swing would maybe be the auto auto turret and this console if you really wanted the plasma damage to be kind of considered into the console itself, but it's still stretching. I really wouldn't recommend this set personally. Number seven is a, an extremely old set and classic set for a lot of your science captains inside the game. If you look at a lot of old builds from like four years ago, three, four years ago, a lot of them used these two weapons combined. They used the Interface Quantum Distributor because it was one of the few universal consoles that existed at the time that gave you exotic damage. Plus, it gave you hole penetration too. So it gave you better damage for your, for your abilities, plus it gave you better damage for your energy weapons, which for a science DPS captain, that's all very valuable. Not to mention that if, if you added the Delphic Torpedo, on top of that, you would get an additional 1% 1, 1 crit chance and like 11% crit severity. So a lot more crit chance, crit severity, which is pretty nice for, for basically any, any build. Um, plus, this gives you a good chance to lower the, the damage resistance rating of an enemy for a while. So that is pretty nice too. You would have to work it quite a bit in order to get the dual, have the dual beam bank for the Delphic Anti-Proton there, but you could make make it work. Those two are obviously the most valuable ones here. Number eight is the Saboteur's Gambit set. Of all the sets in here, this is the most interesting one for me personally. Um, these are just, like to put this in reference to my energy tanking video, this is basically a more powerful version of the Krieger Wave Disruptor. I, that, that's all that these basically are. It, it's double the proc chance, plus you have... Um, an ability to get an, an additional 40 subsystem power um, for 10 seconds af after you get your Krieger Wave stuff um, stacked up fully. What makes this set interesting is, um, I mean, you've got a photon torpedo, which takes one second longer to recharge. But in contrast for that, it's got a 33% chance to disable a, 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 a subsystem off on an enemy vessel for five seconds. Which, whenever that's with this guy, for instance, in which you get an additional 20 armor pen whenever you have, whenever you're, whenever you're attacking enemies that have system offlines, that makes this two piece very valuable. Additionally, if you want a single piece, this thing, since it's just an armor pen with system offline, and if you want to think about it, our armor penetration is very similar to a damage resistance rating debuff on, on an enemy. This is almost like giving your own ship, um, almost like a disruptor proc if you're using phaser weapons. So for instance, if you're a phaser captain and, and, you, and you want the disruptor proc basically on, on your ship, just put this console on, on your ship. That's all, that's all you have to do. And all the, all the phaser weapons, Assuming that, that they have the normal phaser proc on them, they additionally get the disruptor proc for free. <laughs> um, disruptor does a lot of damage stability because of that. Especially if you're a tank captain trying to do phaser and you don't want to you know do damage to straight debuff to an enemy that also makes your allies also do additional damage, this is a pretty valuable console. These guys are decent for, um, by themselves if you want to go with Krieger Wave Disruptors. Uh, for additional drain and controller expertise as a potential proc, this is pretty strong if you want if you want to use a, use a phaser build, and you could possibly also add this photon torpedo for additional 
um, chances to have a pretty long amount of time for that additional armor, armor penetration for your ship. Um, Two-piece set also gives you just terrain and control expertise. So you could actually do just do these two pieces and get drain and control for that. In my opinion, this doesn't really synergize well as a three-piece. This doesn't seem, at least in my opinion, synergize well with these. But that's just me personally. Um, the ninth one here is sensor mod modifications. Um, this is a very interesting one. Um, and I'm going to put it this way. If you're trying to be a plasma tank and you're using a 5-3 configuration with, with five cannons in the front and three turrets, because if you're going to be a plasma tank, you don't want to love the cannons. You are going to be wanting to have cannons with, with, with a wider arc. I could see you using a plasma cannon here along with the weapon sensor enhancer, just so you get a bunch of extra plasma directed energy damage. I could easily see that. Or cannon plus plus of this tri cobalt thing. You can also get the three piece here with those three things combined, and you can get a lot of extra um, hole penetration for your ship too. Like I'm saying, like this is a very niche thing. Um, most people that are going to be doing plasma, they'll just use dual heavy cannons anyway, so they won't even consider this set at all. But it does have its niche market. I, I, I do see that it's like three as full set power is actually pretty pretty viable and pretty powerful. But it's also cost 600 lobby in total, which is pretty high as well. Um, this last set, though, of all the sets in here, I would say is the most powerful because it, it is the most versatile of all the sets in this list. Um, the real thing that comes down to it is this this tetran torpedo launcher is a survival torpedo so it's um it makes your tetran builds very very good it's, it's an energy tetran so your tetran damage consoles things affects this torpedo not to mention it does a little bit of radi radiation damage which is nice um this two piece here with the console itself uh, gives you a lot of tetran damage plus it boosts all damage um, whenever it's in your forward 90 degree arc. What that basically means, even though you have the dual cannons and the dual beam bank, what this is basically saying is, combined with this uh, power thing over here, um, if you want to make a um, dual beam bank build in, in a 5 3 configuration with five weapons in the front, three in the back, with basically four dual beam banks with a diffusive tetron torpedo and then three omnis in the back you know the set a set tetron omni can i kind of beam and a crafted omni your builds can be very strong and then you'll get a lot of projectile damage for your torpedo you'll get some extra passive shield resistance plus with a three piece you'll get a lot of extra tetron damage just passively just by having the three piece set now, alongside, you know, just doing this, if you're doing a Tetra tank build, having just the console plus this thing is pretty powerful still. It's still pretty powerful because you see, because you still get a lot of shield resistance. The shield resistance is also the reason why on my science tanks, when I can afford it, I will still put this torpedo plus this thing on there just for the shield resistance. Um, in my very first video on, on this channel, I talked about how powerful even 3% shield resistance for a console was and that it was very close to being worth it. Because this torpedo is already worth it on its own. For me personally, a, adding this extra console just for the shield resistance is more than worth it for me. Because there's very few places to get shield resistance for consoles. So this, this is already pretty valuable and pretty versatile for a lot of different builds inside the game. All right, so now that we're done with that, let's go to ground gear. Um, from the Crystal Consortium, armor costs 200 lobby, with the exception of one particular one, the Solne um, environmental armors. But besides those, it's it's always 200 lobby. And then any weapon and shield is going to be 50 lobby. I'm going to be going in orders from the two sets for ground. I'll be talking about a, 
a couple of example armor and weapons that SGO ground builds typically like to have for their DPS ground builds. And then I'll just go through every, everything else for ground gear. Before I, I get into the real stuff though, I have to talk about the gambling device. This is the only thing in this video that will be on the exchange, um, but this also just costs 30 lobby. Um, in my opinion, and I think a lot of guys would probably agree with me on this, this is probably the strongest triple-like buff inside the game. If you, if you use this thing, you can't use triple buffs. It's one or the other. I really like it as a tank player because it, it increases my, my dodge chance. And um, there are very few things that increase your dodge chance. Very, very, very few things that do. So more dodge chance, like I'm ground, for, for, for ground combat, basically dodge chance is basically defense. To, to basically put it in, in simple terms. They are technically different things, but for most intensive purposes, dodge chance is basically defense in ground combat. Not to mention that, it also gives you additional crit, crit severity and crit chance, which a lot of your DPS captains really like. Um, th there are some few very specific ground um, damage builds in which they will use a different triple buff instead of the gambling device, but in most ground builds that, that you'll see, they typically use the gambling device. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, now it is a 50-50 chance for, for good luck, luck and bad luck. Bad luck um, only lasts for 60 seconds, but you can reuse the gambling device after, after 30 seconds. If you get good luck, then it lasts for an hour, just like any normal regular triple buff does. So it, it, it is pretty nice. Just saying. Um, so let's get into the first of, of two um, ground sets in, in, inside of the lobby store. This is the, I don't know how to, how to say that, but it's basically the Zinkethi set, but, but for ground. As for those of you that, that know, I really, really like this set. For some reason, the people on the STO wiki do not. And only the armor is actually there. Uh, the Soul Cannon and, and Personal Shield are not. I don't know why they're not, because they're very strong. The set stuff is also pretty strong too. Um, I, 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 I will typically put this two piece set on, on my science captains because um, it'll give me some shield resistance that supplements the lack of it there in, my, in the personal shield for this, the Zinkethi shield. Plus it gives me additional 25 kit performance. And then additionally, if I am a science captain and using radiation damage, the shield also boosts the radiation damage. I, I typically don't use the Zinkethi assault cannon. I do know that some STO ground players like the Zinkethi cannon. Uh, most people like a different cannon a little bit better, but this one's still okay. The armor is okay as well. Um, you do have an activatable that launches you towards your target to deal melee damage. Um, this is this is a pretty strong um, armor if you want to do melee damage, because you, you can easily jump towards enemies, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure if any other armor allows you to do that. I, I, I don't think there's any other armors that allow you to do that. I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't really checked too much into that. But anyway, that thing's super, super powerful. That's why I really like it a lot. Um, our, the other, our, our other ground set is the Instruments of, of Pursuit. As you can see here, I don't really care about this armor. People on the STO Wiki don't really care about this armor. It's there if, if you want to experiment and have fun with it. It's got a little bit of chance to mobilize on its crossbow, but other than that, I think there's other stuff that's probably better than this. This 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 might be good for PvP. That's probably my best guess for it, is that's probably good for PvP. But outside of that, I'm not sure if a really good good place to put this. Alright, so let's go into S2 Ground Favorites now. The two armors here is the Herald Tactical Combat Armor and the Soul Nay Environment Environ Environ Metal Suits. These guys have, to have two different colors, but for the exact same stats. Otherwise, these are also the only armors from the lobby store that cost 50 lobby. That is because you have to collect the three regular Solne suits from the mission as Step Between Stars. So you have to play at least up to the part that you get the until you get the Solne suit three times. Um, at least three times. Sometimes, sometimes you have terrible RNG and you have to play multiple times other than that in order to get the right set, set of three different types, but um, 
these are both pretty powerful. The reason why most of your uh, SEO ground builds use these two is because there are two different maps for, for, for ground TPS that players will use and like record for their DPS runs. The first one is Bug Hunt Elite. And that's the one a lot of players will like to use the Herald Tactical Combat Armor. The other one is a Nukara map called Nukara Prime Transdimensional Tactics. Obviously for Nukara maps, you have to use an environmental suit. So a lot of players will use um, one of the color variants of, of the Solne suits. Now, in, in the Bug Hunt mission, there's still a lot of environmental stuff that's going on in that mission. And so the Solne suit isn't bad in the Bug Hunt mission either. So a lot more of your DPS builds veer towards the Solne suit, but you, you will still, still, still see people use the Herald Tactical Combat Armor. They're both pretty strong. When it comes to the weapons themselves, the two that I seem to see the most often in terms of builds is the Advanced Herald Antipros and Beam Projector for a lot more of long, longer range. Um, the Bullying Heavy Soul Cannon is much better for lots of groups of enemies trying to take down enemies really quickly with, the, with those huge clumps of enemies just right there. It depends on which type of ride you're, you're, you're trying to go. Um, this is better single target. This is better AOE damage. For PvP, the one that, I, that I've seen the most in terms of builds, even though PvP builds are kind of hidden for the most part, is a relatively stasis pistol. This is because you can basically like take out a powerful enemy on the other team, basically take them out of combat for a little bit, and then it's, it's an uneven even fight with your team having the advantage against the other team. And, and in PvP battles, having the upper hand even for a few seconds in ground combat can mean that you can very easily take out a lot of enemy players before this player can come back. There's definitely lots of other ones that are probably better than this, but in a lot more of, of ground builds from what I've seen for PvP, this is, this is the one that seems to be the most prevalent of all of them. Um, when it comes to other armors in, in the game, there's three other standard armors. Um, there's the Herogen Battle Armor that, in my mind, seems to make the most sense for PvP, because Perception is the only place where you really want Perception is in PvP. This basically stops um, people trying to be cloaked coming towards you um, for up to 20 seconds that you basically stop people from being able to sneak up on you. The Adin Battle Armor is the best armor in, in the game for health regeneration. So if that's your thing and you, and you want to use up a lot of lobby to get this, you definitely can. It also negates damage once every 20 seconds too, and has a lot of toxic damage to resistance rating too. It's, it's all just in passive stats. It, 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 is, it is a pretty solid armor. The Harpier's Common Armor is like the exact opposite. It's really low stats in exchange for dodge chance, along with kit performance and kit readiness. So, a decent amount of damage plus dodge chance. So it's decent. The distracting re relocation is garbage, but the rest of the stuff is actually decent. Um, the other stuff here is we'll go with the is the environmental suits um, from the lobby store. Basically, same stats. It's just that they have different looks. Depends upon which faction that, that you're. That their character is from, whether it's Federation, Klingon, or Roman Republic, different looks for an environmental suit. If you're a Federation captain, you also have the option to get the Federation environmental suit that's from, from the, the Discovery era that also has health, health regeneration on it, which is pretty valuable for an environmental suit because it, I think it's like it's this one and um, one really good one off of the new car reputation that I've shown in a different ground build video. Um, that has health regeneration on it. So if you don't care about the Nakari Reputation's looks and want a different look for some ground regeneration for an environmental map, this is probably one that you're probably going for. But this is only available to Federation captains, to my understanding. Um, here's here's the three melee weapons that are that are available to you from the lobby the, from the, the lobby store. The knock the not cool plasma blade looks super cool. It's not that great for DPS, but it, it looks cool. And, and you feel epic whenever you're use, using it. This reminds me a little bit of the Dark Blade. Not, or 
Wait, not Dark Blade. Dark Blade is a different player in the game. <sighs> is it Dark Blade? I don't know. Um, there's there's a lightsaber that 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 looks black from the Star Wars: The Clone Wars TV show. That's what this reminds me of. The Frankie energy is also a weapon that looks cool. I don't like some of what people pretend that you do with the Frank energy weapon inside the game. But um, this weapon is really good for having a good chance to stun. And it's technically a melee weapon. Unfortunately, both of these melee weapons are really bad against the Borg. So if, if you're doing a Borg map, don't use either of these weapons. They are they are garbage. The Tholian Crystalline Sword is a bit better. Um, it's got an unlisted um, passive on it that you can, after a little bit, you can send some energy back at enemies that, that you've been storing for a little bit if you time it properly. But there's 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 a, there's a Nukara sword that's just better than this, so not really a big fan of it. Um, when it comes to the general weapons here, as you can see, there's four different slides for this. The relatively self targeting rifle is instead of a proc, you just whenever you're firing at enemies, they they, they lose they they have uh, they have their runs being halved. Geminar assault wise area minigun. To my understanding, this was one of the ones that was used prior to the Boolean Cannon. Um, nowadays, with this what, 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 what function, there's other stuff that's just better. If you're a tactical captain, if you want what was my function, there's duty officers for that. If you're an engineering captain, you have a sabotage um, kit module. That'll do it. If you're a science captain, you'll blow them away, away, away before they, they, they can do anything. So it doesn't really matter there. The Launchy Crescent Cannon Pistol, can be situationally useful again it has the same type of um proc that the alachi disruptors have and so that that proc's been nerfed into the ground and so it's not that great um let's see here about the enterprise shock trooper cannon another type of cannon that the boolean cannon has basically made up obs obsolete in the game Unlike anti-proton damage in space, this guy has one mission in which you do have a ground enemy that um, is, is invincible. So the proc actually matters for that guy, that one boss, and then the whole game. It's not a particularly hard mission unless you play it on Elite, and then it actually can be hard that the guy can like almost one-shot you with, with, with his punch. But other than that... Um, yeah, there's not as much use for Voth and Antiproton in, in the game. Fluic Antiproton has a similar issue in that its progress is, is situationally useful. Don't don't get this this weapon. The Terran Empire thing, because it has a five second hole, which, which is pretty nice. I've talked about how the Agony Phaser in space, which is what this thing is, but on ground, is is pretty nice for tanking. Okay, on this slide we have two Vod War weapons that base the same type of proc they reduce shield harness and energy hardness on 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 their shields um this is extremely synergistic if you're going to be using for instance if you wanted to be a dps like engineer on on, on the ground and and you're protecting the target and they're, they're running towards the thing you're defending you hit them with this weapon they get and and the proc goes off and they run over a mine Mines already can almost one-shot enemies, and so if this gets if, if this proc goes off on them, basically a lot of your mines will just about one-shot any enemy in the game. Fieldbutter anti-proton anti weapon is nice, but the Herald anti-proton beam projector is just better. On on this last slide here, we have two phaser weapons. We have the Discovery Phaser, which they recently buffed a little bit of its damage just so that it can be more closer to on par with with the rest of the ground weapons. It's still not going to be great versus any other weapon, but it's still okay. Um, the Type 2 Phaser Compression Pistol, if you want to compare this to stuff in space, this is basically just um, a pulse phaser, but, not, but in ground combat, because it gives you damage resistance and lowers the damage resistance of enemies that you're attacking. It's just a, just a pulse phaser, so... If you find a pulse phaser for ground, then this is this is your weapon. As for the newest weapon, the Herc Acoustic Resonator, um, 
I haven't seen enough discussion about this weapon yet to really be able to tell you guys if this is actually a good weapon or not. Based upon the passive stats, it looks like it's a good weapon. But there's a lot of other weapons that look good and aren't. So I, I, I can't really judge this for you. But anyway, that's basically all of the space and ground gear inside the game that um, you have to use lobby in order to get. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, hopefully you found some of that useful. Sorry that this video came out later than I, thought I, I was expecting. Um, I've had some stuff happen in real life, so I, I couldn't have this go on and be, have this come out like the day after that, that announcement came out for the lobby store. So hopefully you all still enjoy it. Um, if this is too late for you, well, wait for four to six months and there'll probably be an, another lobby sale and you'll be able to um, buy the consoles that, that you want for, for your Starship and for your ground team. Anyway, thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.